Our friend Alexandra Smith from America Rising and the uh, America Rising org. She's the executive director there. Joining us now, Alex, good afternoon. Thanks for me on. Happy New Year. Got a big year ahead of, uh, ahead of your pack, ahead of the Republican Party, ahead of the Trump presidency, which we'll get to in a second. But I got to get your hot take today on this feud okay. between Steve Bannon and Donald Trump. <laughs> no, it's a, what are you talking about? It's a perfectly quiet day in Washington. <laughs> yes. I know. You know, what? <laughs> you know it's, it's only quiet because you're about to get a blizzard. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, you know, as a Northeasterner, I can say with certainty that, that D.C. Um, cannot handle the snow. Um, but, you know, look, in every administration, there's always a book that comes out, a tell-all with, a bunch of gossip. Um, we saw this happen under several different administrations, like George W. Bush and, and Bill Clinton. All of them had books come out that had a bunch of salacious details in them. And from what I can tell with this book, there are some details that are clearly wrong. For example, um, the claim that the author makes that uh, the president didn't know who John Boehner was. Well, there are photos of them golfing together. So, um, you know, there's just seems to be some basic fact-checking that was missing from this. That being said, you know, I think that with Steve Bannon, uh, probably he, you know, I think what he did is he made the mistake of confusing the president's abilities to reach his base and to reach out to the American people with his own, um, which is sort of his, uh, you know, the, <laughs> which is his error in all of this. Um, and I think it's really coming back to, to bite him, this, uh, this sense of self-importance. Well, what, what are your thoughts? E- even if the, the Boehner allegation is false, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders today said that there were some ages that were wrong that could have been fast, fact-checked. But, but that doesn't mean that everything in the, in the book is, is fake news, that it's a false narrative. I, I, I think that you have to take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt, but just because there are some falsehoods and some things that are exaggerated and made up, that there could be some, some alarming details that are true, that are accurate in the book. Well, you know, I mean, I think that one thing you can look to um, is the fact that, uh, you know, it seems like, so in the book, uh, Steve Bannon is reportedly very critical of Don Jr., um, and the other Trump children, um, and that's something that Steve Bannon has done publicly. If you'll remember, he uh, openly mocked Ivanka Trump on stage at the Alabama uh, at the Alabama um, Senate rally for Roy Moore. So um, he clearly has a vendetta out for the kids. You know, has, has shown open disdain. So you know, like you said, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these details um, you know have have a you know a shade of truth to them. Um, that being said, though, I, I just don't think that this is what Americans are, are focused on, um, because at the end of the day, look at the scorecard since Steve Bannon has left. On the one hand, you have President Trump and Republicans who have had a great achievement with tax reform being passed before the holidays. And then on the other hand, you have Steve Bannon, who has to wear the Alabama race around his neck, a race that uh, has gone Democrat for the first time in 30 years. Uh, and so, you well, know, you can't there, pin, you can't pin all all of that on Steve Bannon, although he did pick this candidate. But the candidate has a little bit of a problem. <laughs> the ca- candidate is well, no, is into little yeah, girls. The bottom, line, the bottom line, no, and that, that's of course what did him, and, and thank God it did. Um, but you know what? What I'm saying though is that Steve Bannon, um, you know, was insistent upon upon Roy Moore from uh, you know nearly from the beginning of all of this, and um, I think really put republicans in a, in a bad position as a um, woman alex are you are you at all alarmed by any of the allegations from steve bannon about donald trump's behavior towards women hope hicks uh other friends wives that are alleged in this new book that should come out on tuesday uh i haven't i haven't read those allegations i'm not really um okay. i'm not really familiar with what you're talking about there but look i think that you know this is something that political junkies in dc are going to love to talk about they're going to love to get drinks um, if they can make it out past the snow tonight and, and into the bars and, and to chat about among, you know, among each other. But this is just something that I don't think average Americans are, are really focused on because they're, you know, at the end of the day, the American people elected President Trump. They didn't elect Steve Bannon. And I think that a dust-up with the hired help is not going to be what defines this presidency or what, you know, uh, you know what ultimately 
uh, you know, Americans actually care about. So what what do we as average Americans care about? Tell us. Um, we, we, for one thing, uh, will uh, face a government shutdown in less than two and a half weeks, January 19. Uh, the federal government runs out of money then. That seems like it should be at the top of of uh, the prior priority list for the Republican Party, uh, as well as the potential to raise the debt ceiling, uh, which will come in March. Uh, there is immigration on the table. Uh, there's an infrastructure proposal on the table. There's a lot of things to do. What what should be these priorities, and and how or if uh, and when will will Congress be able to tackle them? Well, you know, of course, government funding is a priority, and I think that the hope there is that you know as as uh, White House and uh, congressional officials meet, um, as they're doing on Capitol Hill yesterday and today, um, that some resolution can, can um, be brought together uh, before we sort of get to the 11th hour. Um, just to kind of rewind, though, in our, in our fast-paced news cycle, it's easy to kind of lose sight of, of where we've come from. Um, you know, I do think that tax reform is an important sort of first step to um, understanding where the agenda is headed, and that's, you know, sort of putting more money in the pockets of the American people and making America more competitive for business. You know, tax reform is going to do just that. So in terms of what, you know, Americans are going to care about, they're going to care about looking at their, their paychecks that come February and seeing more money in their in their paychecks. They're going to, um, you know, next uh, year when they file their taxes, they're going to see uh, that their tax bill has gone down. And I think that, that that's significant for so many Americans. A lot of the Democrats, they like to sort of put down um, the kind of mo- or the money that Americans are going to get back. They're, they're sort of, um, you know, they're um, being dismissive of all of these companies that are now offering bonuses to their employees as a result of the tax law. Um, but that's real money in the hands of, of Americans. So you have, you have the tax re- reform bill um, that was passed this past year, um, and then I think that we'll, what, qu- what will quickly come on its heels um, is hopefully big plans for infrastructure um, to meet the growing demands of American business. And so, you know, I think that both of those items working in tandem together are going to be huge, um, you know, huge lifts to an economy that's already roaring. Plus, uh, a lot of employees around the country are, are getting bonuses this month, uh, uh, allegedly as a result of the uh, the, the tax cuts. Coming this year, many companies have announced that their employees will either receive bonuses or uh, pay raises or an increase to their 401k contributions and more. Uh, so that could be an immediate stimulus uh, for the economy uh, as soon as those uh, those bonuses begin to arrive in people's paychecks. It sure can, and you know I think that what's been uh, you know what's been really interesting to watch is uh, Democrats have to answer for you know, these bonuses that are being given out. Um, you know, when it was just, uh, when it was like the first two companies that came out, uh, you know, like AT&T, uh, you know, we saw a lot of Democrats that were trying to dismiss it. You now, know, there, there have been so many bonuses being handed out. You know what we should recall this month, rename this month? Granduary. We should we should call <laughs> this Granduary. I like it. Well, no, here, and, and here's the thing is that, you know, we're up to dozens of companies now that through some, you know, through some means, are giving their employees um, some of their money back, whether it's through 401k contributions or an end of the year bonus, um, which is great. And now Democrats are in sort of a tough position because they took such a hard line against this bill. They voted in such an extreme partisan way against this bill in lockstep, you know, with one another. And there are a lot of senators that are vulnerable. Um, you know, in 2018. Well, we're going to have to, next time you're on, Alex, talk about Senator Sherrod Brown and whether or not Ohio could be a state up for play because of all of this. Uh, Alex Smith on Twitter at Alexandra C. Smith, uh, AmericaRisingPack.org to find out more information or follow at America Rising. Alex, stay warm tonight, okay? Thanks so much. You too.